Science and technology hold the key to the progress and development of any nation. Technology plays a fundamental role in wealth creation, improvement of the quality of life and real economic growth and transformation in any society. And now, in this presentation, we will talk about pre-colonial, colonial, and post-colonial evolution of science, technology and nation building of Philippines. Pre-colonial Archaeological findings suggest that the modern men from Asian mainland first came overland and across narrow channels to live in Palawan and Batangas around 50,000 years ago. For 40,000 years, they made simple tools or weapons of stone flakes, but eventually developed techniques for sawing, cleaning, and polishing hard stones. This stone may have a transit form settlement in the major Philippine islands such as Sulu, Mindanao, Zamboanga, Davao, Negros, Samar, Luzon, Batangas, Laguna, Rizal, Bulacan, and Cagayan region. By the 1st century AD, Filipinos were weaving cotton, smelting iron, making pottery, glass ornaments, and gauging in culture. Lowland rice was cultivated in dike fields and in interior mountains regions as in the Cordillera. In terrace fields, we utilize spring water. The Iron Age lasted from 30 to 50 BC to 11 to 20 AD. During this period, Filipinos were engaged in extraction, smelting, and refining iron from ores until the importation of cast iron from Sarawak and made there from China. Filipino has also learned to build boats for the coastal trade. By the 10th century AD, this had been become a highly developed technology. In fact, the early Spanish chronicles took note of the refined plank built warship called Caracalla. These boats were well suited for the inter island trade rate. Colonial Age The beginnings of modern science and technology in the Philippines can be traced to the Spanish regime. The Spaniards established school, hospital, and started scientific research, and this had important consequences for the race of the country professions. In Spanish regime in 16th century, college were created. Some list of colleges are Colegio de San Ildefonso 1595, Colegio de San Ignacio Manila 1595, Colegio de Nuestra Señora del Rosario de Manila 1597. Colegio de San Jose, Manila, 1601. In this regime, also hospitals were now developed. San Juan Lazaro Hospital, the oldest in the Far East, was founded in 1570. The Spaniards introduced the technology of town planning and building with stones, bricks, and tiles in many places. The religious personally led in these undertakings. Because of the lack of skilled Filipinos in these occupations, the Spaniards had to import Chinese master builders, artisans, and nations. The native Filipinos were drafted through the institution of compulsory labor services to work on this project. In this manner, the construction of the walls of Manila, the churches, convents, hospitals, schools, and public buildings were completed by the 17th century. In 1887, the Laboratory Municipal de Ciudad de Manila was created by the King. Its main function was to conduct biochemical analysis for public health. It had a publication called Chronica de Ciencias Modesas de Filipinas. At this time, native Filipinos began to participate in scientific research. The Manila Observatory was founded by Jesus in 1865 and issued the first public payphone warning in the Philippines in 1879. A royal decree made the observatory an official institution run by Jesus and also established a network of meteorological stations under it. Lastly, post-colonial. The University of the Philippine system remains the most developed with extensive graduate and undergraduate degree programs in science and engineering. It received over half of the national budget for the state universities and colleges. Most non-sectarian universities and colleges are organized and managed like business and enterprises and heavily dependent on tuition fees. To operate profitability, they tend to concentrate on low-cost courses like business administration, liberal arts, and education. They have been able to impose selective admission 
lower faculty students ratios, and provide laboratory and library facilities. The creation of the science agency undoubtedly shows increasing government concern and support for the development of Philippine science and technology. In 1974, a national science development program was also included in the government four-year development plan, FY 1974 to 1977. Post-war scientists created the Philippine Flora in search of antibiotics and other research. Nutritional studies pointed to the in Philippines. Diet, they sought the cost of kadang kadang, aquanapiti, and they from the study of agricultural, marine, and forest resources. The expanding number of science agencies has given rise to a demand for high-caliber scientists and engineers to undertake research in staff universities and colleges. Hence, measures have also been taken towards the improvement of the country's science and manpower. In March 1983, Executive Order No. 889 was issued by the President, which provided for the establishment of national network of centers of excellence in basic sciences. As a consequence, six institutes were created. National Institutes of Physics, Biological Sciences, Natural Sciences Research, Chemistry, Biology, and Mathematical Sciences. Related to this effort was to establish a scientific career system in the civil service by President Decree No. 901 on July 19, 1993. This is designed to attract more qualified scientists to work in government and encourage young people to pursue science degrees and careers. Thank you for watching.